This video was specially requested by Patreon supporter Gorgira the Zilla. If you want to get your video requests out immediately and get some other awesome rewards in the process, be sure to visit patreon.com slash legends. Welcome back everyone to a new episode of Kaiju VFX. Been a while since we've had one of these. Today we're creating the Showa era atomic breath for Godzilla, as specially requested by Gojira the Zilla on Patreon. Now before we get started, take a look at what the final product that we're making is going to look like. So like always with Kaiju VFX, I've got our figure and scene already all set up here. Uh, I don't really feel the need to go over that because there are plenty of tutorials on uh, After Effects, green screening, and color correction and all that. We do have our color grade layer, just because I like to have uh, a little sample of the color correction while we're making the effect just to make sure that everything will still look okay in post. Now as I said today, we're going to be making the Showa era atomic breath for Godzilla. I've done a tutorial on the Millennium Atomic Breath in the past, but today we're going to do the Showa era. So starting out, we're going to make this Showa Atomic Breath sort of that hand-painted look uh, back in the Showa era in the 70s, you know, when they'd pan paint all the, the frames of the film to get that Atomic Breath, and it looks really fiery, sort of. So to start off, we're going to make a new solid, and we'll call this Breath. And uh, we'll unclick the eye here for now. And uh, this is the first frame where I want the Atomic Breath to start appearing, so I'm going to draw a simple mask, not coming all the way out of his mouth. And we're going to make it a little bit jagged, so something like that. And then uh, we'll just cut that layer right there, and we'll hit M. We'll set a keyframe for the mask path. We'll go forward a frame or two, and then we will animate that mask path to come out from Godzilla's mouth. And so I'm going to use the multiple points that we made on this mask in order to sort of create that uh, fiery sort of look. And maybe we'll add a couple more points on the mask as we go along. Just find a shape that we think looks okay. The real trick is getting the angle right because Godzilla is slightly toward the camera. So yeah, give me one second and we'll sort out this shape. All right, I think this looks fine. So now we're going to animate this mask as Godzilla turns his head and keeps spewing out atomic breath. So we'll just go forward about here or so. We'll uh, select the entire mask and just sort of shift it this way. And we'll also animate the points a little bit. Come around here. Sort of keep it going in a straightest stream. Alright, I think this is looking decent. We might uh, go back and change some of the animation on this mask a little bit later on. But now we're going to actually start getting into, well, making this look like Atomic Breath. So right now it's just the black solid still. So we're going to go into the Effects and Presets panel over here. And we're going to add a Fractal Noise effect. So yeah, we've got this Fractal Noise effect right here. And uh, I'm going to keep the Fractal Type on Basic, just because I feel that kind of gives it that uh, fiery, smoky look. And uh, we'll go into the contrast settings, we'll turn that up a little bit, maybe turn up the brightness a little bit as well. And we can toy around with this as much as we want later on. Maybe we'll come back into the transform and we'll play around with the scale, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to go back to that first frame again and we're going to animate the offset turbulence. So we're going to hit the stopwatch right here. We'll press U on the layer so that we can open up all of our keyframes. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the very end of this atomic breath. And uh, we're just going to take that uh, little node right there for the turbulent or offset turbulence. And we're just going to drag that down all the way to a far corner. And so what that does, that's going to animate our fractal noise. So as he's shooting the atomic breath, it's going to move along in sort of that smoky pattern. You know what, maybe we will go back actually, solo that again, and uh, I'll move it down, just maybe not as much as I did there. Yeah, I like that a little better. You want to get a nice speed on that atomic breath. So I like how that looks. Alright, next we're going to add a turbulent displace effect. We'll add that after the fractal noise. 
And uh, you see what this does, it makes it a little more wavy. I used this effect in my Millennium Atomic Breath, uh, and we're not going to use it to the same extent that I did there. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to turn down the amount just a tad, but mainly what we're going to turn down is the size. So we're going to really bring in that turbulent noise, so it just gets a little bit uh, jiggly there. And so you can see, if I turn off the masks, before and after what we have here. Uh, but what's going to make this look even more like fire is if we turn up the complexity. So we'll bring that up quite a bit. Maybe we'll go about 8.5 or so for now. And uh, we can keep playing around with the size and the amount a little bit until we find something that suits our needs pretty well. I think something like this doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too bad. Maybe we'll turn down the complexity a fair bit, actually. I don't think it's too, too necessary. So maybe we'll keep it around 4.4 or so. So what we're also going to do is we're going to click the stopwatch on the offset turbulence on this effect, and we'll go once again to the very end, and I'll press Control shift h to bring up our uh, masks and points again, and we'll just drag that offset turbulence down into a corner again. Yeah, so now that uh, turbulence effect, as you can see, it sort of moves along with our atomic breath as it's being shot out of Godzilla's mouth. And we could animate the evolution for this, and we might animate it just a little bit. But by animating the offset turbulence, you really get the effect that the atomic breath is actually moving, rather than just having the, uh, the fractal for the turbulence just animate a little bit. Like, you can see certain points of the atomic breath stay the same as they move along. It's looking decent so far. So next we are going to duplicate that turbulent displace effect. And uh, we'll solo the beam again just so we can uh, get a closer look. So we're going to just play around with the turbulent displace here. We're going to turn the complexity down to just one we'll say. And uh, we're going to play around with the size and amount of this with this displacement effect. We're going to get something that makes the wave or the beam look a little bit more wavy. Nothing too much, we don't want anything you know, crazy like that, but just adding a little bit of turbulence to the beam will go a long way. And we can keep the offset turbulence animation that we had before. And if we also want, we can go into the evolution and just spin that around a little bit so we get a different uh, vector for the turbulence than the first time. Yeah, so a pretty subtle change, but overall it really does help out the beam effect overall. Alright, now we're going to color this beam. So we're going to click on the uh, solid right here, and we are going to add a CC toner effect. And uh, we're going to change this to a pen tone. So this will give us complete control over the highlights, the brights, midtones, dark tones, and shadows. And we'll just play around with all of this and uh, mess around with some various blue colors until we find something that suits our needs. Yeah, that looks good. We've got some decent colors on the uh, the highlights and brights. Maybe we'll bring them down just a little bit. Want to get some decent contrast while still keeping the beam looking pretty bright overall. And uh, we can even go back into the fractal noise and uh, bring down the brightness if we think it's a little too much. Alright, it's looking better. So now we're going to go into the uh, mask feather, just press F to bring that up, and we'll just bring the feather up to about 6 or so. So that's just going to soften those edges a little bit. But uh, as you can see, the beam is looking pretty opaque still right now. So what we're going to do to fix that up is we're going to add just a screen effect. Yeah, so that makes the beam, uh, the darker parts, obviously more transparent. And that makes the beam also brighter overall as it's missing with the background. And we can keep playing around with the feather of the mask. Maybe try something around 12 or so. And, uh, you know, just keep playing around and trying out different looks with the breath until we find something that looks pretty decent. Alright, now we're going to add some glow to this beam. So I'm going to just turn all the masks off real quick. And we're going to add a stylized glow effect. Add that below our toner. And uh, let's solo this layer real quick. So before we do anything else, we're going to change the glow operation to screen, change the glow colors to A and B, and we'll change the color looping to sawtooth. A is greater than B. 
And so now we'll go into our A and B colors down here and we'll change the color A to a pretty light blue, something around there. And for color B, we will add a bit of a darker blue, something saturated like that usually works. And so now if we play around with uh, these glow settings, we can get something that pretty subtle, generally speaking, but still adds a lot to the effect. All right, so now we're gonna take this breath, we're gonna duplicate it, and we'll rename this to Breath Glow. And so we're gonna move this below the other one, and we'll solo this real quick. So what we're gonna do, we'll uh, collapse all these, and we're gonna disable the glow for now. We're gonna add a fast box blur to this layer, and we're gonna check repeat edge pixels, and we'll just sort of blur this effect out. And uh, we can combine or put both these layers on and see what we're really doing. And we can even put this box blur before the toner and see how that helps. And we can mess around with the colors again and sort of make this look a lot more blue overall. Make this a bit wider. Yeah, so you can see what that does. That just adds a more spreaded glow. All right, well, I think we're gonna end off this tutorial right here. Uh, yeah, this is just showing off how to make the show atomic breath and after effects uh, Obviously, you know destruction and the glowing spines and all that I've done in previous tutorials So I'll leave that for you to experiment with but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this and yeah if you have your own requests for kaiju VFX videos uh, Put those in the comments and I will get around to those eventually or you can support us on patreon and get your video requests made with top priority So again, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this effect video and I'll see you guys here next time with whatever it is that I have to offer. I would like to give special thanks to Jimmy Moore, Gojira the Zilla, and an extra special thanks to Monster Island Buddies for being Patreon supporters during this period. If you want to learn how you too can support this channel and earn some awesome rewards in the process, be sure to visit patreon.com slash daikaijulegends.